it's Hanuman who I think is the best authority on the story of Rama. So we can beg for the blessings of Hanuman to try to say something, only a small, small, small fraction of the unlimited pastimes of Lord Rama, whose pastimes in turn are only a fraction of the unlimited pastimes of the Lord in his many, 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 many actually unlimited forms. One might ask, why is it that we remember Rama? After all, we are devotees of Krishna, and Rama is known as uh, Maryada Purushottama. Maryada means boundary. He's the, the Lord of boundaries. Well, what it really means is he is the Lord of, he is, he is the perfect manifestation of propriety. He does everything properly. He is the Lord of Dharma. He follows Dharma. Although he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, doesn't need to follow anything or anyone. He is the <coughs> creator of Dharma himself. Yet he follows Dharma. Much to the exasperation of his devotees. Uh, we talked last Sunday about how he was banished from Ayodhya quite suddenly, quite unexpectedly. And his very cheerful acceptance of his banishment was not a source of happiness either for his father, Dasharatha, nor for his mother, nor for all the residents of Ayodhya. It seems the only person that was a source of happiness for was Kaikeyi and Mantari, who hatched the plot uh, by which uh, Rama was banished to the forest for 14 years. I didn't mention last time that when Bharata, the son of Kaikei, for whom this arrangement had been made, that he would be crowned the king. Bharata, the younger brother, would be crowned king instead of Rama. When Bharata found out about this, he immediately went to find Rama, who by this time was already in the forest, already was wearing bark uh, clothes made of bark. That's a new style of clothes. <laughs> the clothes design, actually. Uh, and actually, it's an ancient style. Bharata went to find him to beg him to come back uh, to Ayodhya and to inform him that Dasharatha, out of pangs of has now left the world. Dasharatha uh, loved his son Rama so much that when Rama left, at his own request, Dasharatha was forced by the uh, benediction that he had given his wife Kaikei years before, two benedictions actually, whatever you want, I will give you she delayed her request until this time, and when, when he, having made this promise, was forced to tell Rama to give up Ayodhya and go to the forest, it was too painful for him. He couldn't survive it himself. He left the world. So Bharata came to inform him, to inform Rama that our father has left. And now Ayodhya is 
basically a desert without you. So please come back. Rama said, no, I can't come back. I've made a promise. Uh, I've made a promise to my father and I will keep it. No, but he has, uh, he has died. All of this. He died because you followed his order. <laughs> and now you're insisting to keep following his order. What is this? No, I have made a promise. I will keep it. So, uh, Bharata said, well, I can't rule. There's no question of me ruling. All right. He took the shoes, the, the padukas of Rama, as representing Rama back to Ayodhya. He installed the shoes uh, on the, at the throne, and then he himself worshipped those shoes, and he himself, Bharata, stayed outside of Ayodhya, practicing austerities. And the understanding was, Ram is actually ruling. And if there is some issue, some question uh, that has to be resolved, something practical, okay, someone needs to consult with me, Bharata, then come out to my ashram outside Ayodhya. reasonably well because the residents of Ayodhya for 14 years basically had nothing to do except lament that Rama wasn't there. So they had nothing to really uh, you know, uh, become any difficulty because they were always simply thinking of Rama in separation. The Ramayana is considered to be, to have one central rasa, and that is karuna. Karuna means, can mean compassion, it can also mean pity. Uh, it's a story, it is a sad story. Uh, it's a, a story of, uh, of karuna, of sadness. Everyone is, everyone's heart is broken because Rama has left. Well, we uh, discussed the story up to the abduction of Sita. So, so I thought I should continue from there, say a few points. Of course, we all know the story, but we can always hear it again. And whereas the associates of Rama in Ayodhya were feeling separation from Rama when he left the forest, as, as we discussed, Sita said, well, I'm going with you. And at first Rama said, no, you're not. And she said, yes, I am. And she got her will. All of this being, of course, part of the plan, or part of the, uh, yes, part of the greater plan of the devas, the demigods, for whom it was necessary that Rama, number one, go to the forest, number two, that Sita become abducted by Ravana, so that Rama would go after Rama. were very distraught, very disturbed because of Ravana's power. He was the Treta Yuga 